think one of the one of the things we set out to do with bringing on this guy to really create that attachment to Mass Effect players was to show them some, some, them something new and different. This was one of the fundamental goals right at the beginning. You know, there's one track you could take on on post release content, just like you know, you throw out more of the same. You know, like just whatever. You know, really, we've never had that philosophy all the way from back on the Neverwinter modules that we used to release on the PC to, to bring down the sky. We want to show them something different, different type of game plan they have, a different character class they have. And that's you know what really the fans value. The fans value the ability to expand their view of the Mass Effect universe, and that's what we did with Bring Down the Sky. We used we had the exact same team making Bring Down the Sky, or a lot of the same people, and we were starting to do the planning already before we actually finished Mass Effect One, and so. Uh, the challenge being that uh, a lot of us were were doing some task switching back and forth between planning uh, that downloadable content module while we were still finishing up Mass Effect 1. But the real advantage then was that we had people, the writers, the tech designers, uh, the animators, everybody who was on Mass Effect 1 who knew the IP so well uh, working on the downloadable content so that we could integrate it seamlessly. Everything in Mass Effect is the universe hangs in the balance and we wanted to get that kind of bridge story in right after the main game in a way that we really feel like a continuation of, uh, of uh, Shepard's adventure. I really hope that we accomplish that. It was one challenge with Bring Down the Sky, being since it's like a, a downloadable module that some people will get, will, will, will buy, some people won't see, um, we wanted to make it as integrated in the story as we could in the, in the universe, but you know we couldn't make it part of the core planets. Uh, part of the core story, just to kind of mirror off the core story and hint at things that would be come, coming in uh, Mass Effect 2 and, and the books and such that. So for like Bring Down the Sky, you know, you happen to be in the right space at the right time and get this new little piece of adventure uh, around Terra Nova that uh, uh, reflects the main plot. It has the Batarians that you mentioned before hinted at. The Batarians you deal with in Bring Down the Sky are terrorists, you know. And, and there's a lot of bad blood between the humans and the Batarians. Uh, and, and so, who knows, maybe it co comes from, you know, what we have in, in modern day, all these reflect what people understand, what people know. When we first added the planet, we are trying to look at what elements can we, can we add to it to make it more like a, a core uh, storyline. Um, and that's when we, we thought about using the, the Batarians, the great villains of Mass Effect that had been introduced in the Revelation. It all started from there, it's like, how do we make them the big villain? And right now, of course, we live in a world where the big villains are the terrorists, right? Like, it's, it's no longer the East versus the West and the Cold War. So we wanted to use that to drive how bad these people were, just killing for the sake of killing, killing civilians. I think the setting that we had of being an uncharted world, it, it needed to be this, this planet. We used an asteroid in that case. And visually, it creates this great view of a looming planet that you're just about to crash on kind of playing around with the ideas, four eyes, um, didn't want to go too many, uh, eight was probably uh, out, of, out of question, our character artists would panic, we had enough time, uh, trouble with some of the other stuff we were getting, uh, dealing with on the game. So we drew this up and basically like this guy here, he had four eyes, uh, kind of the shape of the head is what we wanted, these interesting nostrils and, and Matt did a really awesome job on them. We were trying to reuse some of the elements from the original game and one idea was to take the, the the mining entrance on Therum. I don't know if you remember this, but in the game, this had the platform that you kind of walked up to, and then you would go down into the mines. We kind of like the shape of this, and then just add up these four uh, supports that would hold the uh, the rocket on, and got a reuse out of that. It actually turned out really well. And then just by adding the effects, adding the sound, uh, created this uh, really uh, uh, unique piece in the level. Working on downloadable content was really a great opportunity. Uh, it's really like game development 101. In a very short time frame, you have to build the entire content of the game. Building Bring Down the Sky took in total about eight months from beginning to end. Uh, there's a lot of planning at the beginning, so that, that doesn't, you know, it's all, not all heavy development time. But uh, planning started uh, before Mass Effect actually had finished and we had actually released it. So we knew we can kind of add some interesting challenges to the, uh, the module and it kind of opened us up to kind of do a little bit more, uh, uh, maybe difficult fights, add some new interesting puzzles. So it's kind of a, a challenge to us as designers to come in and try to come up with some new ideas. We, we knew that um, we couldn't have a code patch, so we're still living within the, the code base of the first Mass Effect. And we, uh, it was really fun to kind of try to figure out what could we do new, so we came in and tried to 
you know, make some more interesting Mako combats where they have like turrets with shields that can kind of, you know, make it so that you can cheat from long distances and snipe them from far away. Um, had a little minefield. Uh, uh, tried to soup up the combats a little bit with the Batarians, try to, try to give them a little bit of flavor, uh, giving them like they had their own war dogs. You know, some more dialogue that they could be talking in the combat, so giving them some personality to go, release the barons, and go like, okay, you're gonna have to deal with some, some uh, melee creatures coming in on you. Uh, that was a lot of fun.